to know who you ask, they'll tell you I'm a legend. From Y.O. to the Veil to the Mongol spot on Creston. Always been a thousand, never ever been a lane. Lay a nigga down, down for these three letters on my chain. Yo, yo, shaking with it, y'all. You already know what time it is. This is your boy, Jay Hood, and I'm right back at y'all with a brand new episode of the Tales from the Hood vlog series. A nigga had to double down on y'all today and give y'all an extra episode because it's going down, all right? Look, y'all know how I give it up, man. I need everybody to stream or download my brand new project entitled Self, available right now on all digital streaming platforms. So go run that up for your boy. Stop playing. You hear me? All right, so let's get into this shit, man. What I'm about to say now... All my niggas that been fucking with me and been following me, you already know this, you know what I mean? But I have to, to speak on this for the people that don't know this, you feel me? So what I'm going to um, talk about is this 6 9 character, right? Yeah, you remember him? <laughs> anyway, look, man. Before all of this snitching shit came to light, you know, at the very first beginning of his career... Like when he first came out and was proclaiming himself to be the king of New York, I was the first artist out of New York to speak on this bozo. You know what I mean? And tell people exactly why he felt comfortable saying the things that he was saying and why he was saying the things that he was saying and nobody wasn't saying nothing and nobody was trying to check him. You know, not the, I'm not pointing fingers or, you know, singling nobody out, but nobody wanted to speak on him or say anything about him because they were shook of who he was running with and the people that he was affiliated with. So niggas ain't really want no smoke like that. But me, I spoke on it and I put my statement on the internet in the form of a video. And I stated nothing but facts. And uh, a little after that video came out, you know, um, people seen what I was saying was true. And other people started speaking on them, but I never got the full credit for speaking on it while other people did, right? Now, it was a few vlogs that picked up my, my video that I posted about him, uh, like Vlad TV, DJ Academics, he actually posted it. And when he posted it, the 6 9 nigga commented on his shit, right? He jumped on his shit and commented some laughing shit. You know, that was, that was cute and all that. And then uh, I end up making a, a track about this nigga called Red Rum. So after I did that, Academics posted that also. So when he posted that, the nigga 6 9 commented again and was like, okay, this is getting interesting. All the old niggas is coming out and all this other shit. And then, like, shortly after that, he made a subliminal video speaking about a nigga. Like I said, subliminally, though, anybody with common sense knew who he was talking about. It was clear that he was advised not to say my name because of the position that he was in, how hot he was, and how hot I wasn't. So, you know. Niggas know what time it was, though, because of the shit that he was saying. He was like, yo, I got niggas that been out for 10 plus years and all that shit coming at me crazy, talking shit. But if I ain't the king of New York, why ain't nobody came at me or nobody stopped me and all this other goofy shit? You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, he didn't address me directly, but I knew what he was talking about, right? Okay, um, so when all this, uh... When all this extra shit saw coming out about him ratting, I wasn't surprised at all because I knew what type of nigga this nigga was from the jump. You know what I'm saying? I DM'd him at one point and told him, I'm like, nigga, you got all these other niggas fooled. But you don't got me fooled, nigga. I've been to what time it was with you. You's a goofy. So he, he DM'd me back and was like, nigga, shut your old ass up or some shit. I'm like, nigga, I'm, I'm shooting a video to the track in Brooklyn. I dare you to pull up, nigga. You know what I mean? I didn't end up shooting in Brooklyn because um my homies that I was going, uh, going out there to shoot it with on that block, he told me that his block was hot at the time. He's like, yo, I got the boys out here and shit right now, so it won't be a good idea to come do it. So I didn't do it out there. I ended up doing it in the Bronx. So I told him, nigga, we was going to be in the Bronx for a while, nigga, pull up. But I knew he wasn't going to pull up. I basically just told a nigga that just to call his bluff, you feel me? And um, I took it as far as to DM, not excuse me, not DM, email this nigga baby mother, you feel me? I was trying to book her for another video shoot that I was doing in Cali. That's on some, some funny shit. I was going to clown the nigga. But uh, the the price that she was asking for for her booking was incredible. And there was no way that I was about to give that to her. You know what I mean? She was saying some shit like she wanted five grand uh, for her security to be paid for. Plus, she wanted two to three rooms and like three flights. I'm like, hell no. Like the, the most I was willing to give her, which I offered her, was like, I think three grand, two flights and like two hotel rooms. And she declined that and shit. So. That never ended up happening. I was like, hey, whatever, you ain't getting five grand from me. You ain't, you ain't got no talent. So 
I wasn't even, I ain't even entertained that. But, um, you know, all these people that were supporting this dude, once the, the information started coming out that he was ratting, they was acting all surprised and shit like they couldn't believe what the fuck was going on. Like, any real nigga seen right through this nigga from the gate. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these other motherfuckers, y'all helped create this dude by supporting him and giving him that push and that light that, that he needed to to become as big as he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, playing his records, posting every everything that he posts on y'all vlogs, on the blog sites, like, doing everything, just feeding the monster, knowing that he was a goddamn... Uh, like, fake it in a $3 bill, like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and y'all got the audacity, not y'all, the, the the watchers, but the people that was actually supporting them had the audacity to act, like, surprised. Like, they don't know or understand how the hell uh, he ended up like that. Come on, man, you should have pe peeped that from the jump. Motherfuckers ain't want to give your boy the credit for, for speaking out the first beginning, but it's all good, though. They gave other motherfuckers credit. But not the kid because of who I am. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that shit is just hilarious to me, man. This, the whole snitch nine thing, too. I was the first nigga to say that publicly. And after that, niggas jumped on that and started running with it. Hey, it's cool, though, man. I didn't say a lot of shit that niggas ran with and I didn't get the credit for. So, you know, I ain't tripping. But, um, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like I said, the name of the track was Red Rum. That shit was hard. Spoke facts on that. Everything I'm saying is facts. You know, I never lied to y'all niggas not one time. I might have did shit in the past in a fashion that, you know, niggas didn't agree with. But as far as lying, I never lied to niggas. You feel me? So, uh, like always, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And um, everybody have a blessed day, man. Till next time.